Hey guys, I'm Jenny, and this is our travel trailer behind us. Now, since purchasing it two and a half years ago, we have made a lot of updates and upgrades to it. We have videos on almost all of these, and in those videos, we show installing them, testing them, all that good stuff. But we've never really shown in one video everything we've done for those of you that maybe haven't seen all those upgrade videos. So in today's video, we are not only just going to be showing you all those upgrades, but we're going to tell you how much they cost, how long it took to install them, and whether or not we would do them again. All of the upgrades we're going to be showing you in this video will have links to them in the description below, along with links to all the install videos as well. Now, the very first ever upgrade we did was the bed lift kit for our bed. Most RVs have storage under their beds, and a lot of the bigger RVs, they have bed lift kits in them already, but ours didn't come with one. And one of the first things we also did was we got a new mattress. Our mattress here is at least twice as thick, if not three times as thick, as the original mattress that came with our trailer, and it's way heavier than the original one. And we have to get down here every day, multiple times a day. We store all our pet food down here, extra blankets, our backpacks for hiking, all that stuff. So because we had to get down here every day, I'd have to hold this up, and it was really heavy, while also trying to get into the pet food or to feed the animals or whatever. So installing these two gas springs down here was an absolute must for us. It only took David two hours and it was $60. So it's super affordable. And obviously it is just a must for being able to access this all the time for us. So if we do it again, that answer is very much a yes. Our second upgrade was here in the bathroom and that is our max air fan. Our trailer originally came with just a real small, it looked like a computer fan, a uh, computer cooling fan up in here, one of the exhaust fans that does absolutely nothing. I think it's just there for show. Um, and we knew that we wanted to be able to draw in a whole bunch of air um, throughout the day. If it was a hot day, we wanted to be able to pull air in through the windows, get a breeze going in here. Or if we were like cooking, boiling water, and a lot of humidity was accumulating in the trailer, we knew we wanted to be able to get that out too. So ventilation was really important. So we removed our old fan and replaced it with a max air air fan. Now we got the cheaper version that doesn't really have any of the bells and whistles so it, it's manual open and it doesn't have the vent that kind of scoops backwards and, and like faces down so that you can run the fan when it's raining. Um, and because of that ours only cost $150 and it took about eight hours, maybe a little more to install this just because I had to remove the old fan first and uh, getting that off the roof, peeling all of the sealant off was the longest part of it. Wiring this in took no time at all because the wires were already right there and I just had to splice into them to power them to max fan. Um, but would we do it again? Absolutely. In my opinion, this is another must, just like the bed lift kit. Um, you, it's so important to be able to ventilate the trailer, like I said, on hot days, but, but even more important than that is ventilating if, um, you know, there's humidity in the trailer or if there's, you know, something smells, it's good to be able to ventilate that out too. When you're cutting up onions first, you know, for instance, you got to get that out of here. Otherwise your eyes are just going to start burning and we love onions. So we're always cooking onions and throwing them in with everything. And we have the max fan going and it just pulls that out. It is excellent. Now the third upgrade we did to our travel trailer is this composting toilet. And the reason we went with a composting toilet is because we boondock in dry camp almost exclusively. Very rarely will you find us in an RV park or somewhere that has hookups uh, or even a dump station within 20 miles. So for us, a composting toilet was very important. What this allows us to do is combine our black tank and our gray tank together into one huge gray tank. We have 76 gallons of gray water storage in this small 25 foot trailer and it's because we were able to combine them, those two tanks, because of our composting toilet. But it hasn't been all rainbows and unicorns with this composting toilet. It does smell a little more than we thought it would, but thankfully not when the lid is closed. Like right now, I'm right next to it. I can't smell it at all. But when you're using it, 
uh, some smells can come and it's a little more than we thought, but it's it's nothing bad. And we have had one bug issue with it where we had gnats living in it. So we had to disassemble it. We bleached the whole thing and it took care of that. And it only that's only happened once in the two and a half years that we've owned this. So um, when it comes to if, if the composting toilet is more work than a black tank, I don't think it is. I think it's a little less work than a black tank. Uh, but no more, certainly. One thing that we haven't done with our composting toilet that uh, many other people have done with this model and it's probably a really good idea is to divert, uh, make a way so that uh, the urine tank just diverts straight into your gray tank so that you don't have to mess around with dumping this anymore. For us, the uh, urine tank only lasts about four days, which you know isn't very long and the solids tank will last about two to three weeks before we need to dump it and refill it with fresh composting material. So to answer the question of would we go with a composting toilet again, for us, yes. It fits our lifestyle very well. Like I said, the, the increase in gray water storage lets us stay out on site and boondock longer. You know, we, we can stay out for two weeks before our gray tank fills up, which is huge for us. So it's totally worth it. It did cost $960 new, which is a hefty price. But for those of you that want to travel similar to we do, and you want your gray tank to last as long as it possibly can, it is worth it. And it took about 12 hours to install, but that was mainly because uh, I had to do some wiring for the fan that's inside this to keep it, that keeps the inside of the toilet dry, er. And uh, I had to route the exhaust tube for that fan out to the outside of the trailer. So there was some screwing through this cabinet down at the bottom and then through the floor in that cabinet to get that exhaust hose outside. Um, so that took up most of the time. And I also had to make a step uh, a wooden step so that the toilet would sit flush with the old toilet's flange that led down into the black tank. And the fourth upgrade we made to our trailer is without question the largest, the most expensive, but the most important one and the one that we use all day, every day. And that is our solar and our battery bank. The solar components that we have is 670 watts of monocrystalline solar panels up on the roof of our trailer. And we also have a 130 watt fold out portable expansion panel that we can set up on the ground and plug in if we wanna boost our solar output by another 130 watts. We have a 3000 watt pure sine wave inverter, a 75 amp three stage smart converter charger, a standalone transfer switch, an Outback FM60 MPPT charge controller, and 400 amp hours of lithium iron phosphate batteries. Now let's start off with how much it cost. All of the solar components, not including the battery bank, cost $3,600. Pretty steep price, it's pretty salty. But wait till I tell you how much the batteries cost. <laughs> they cost $2,400 each. We have two of them, so it's $4,800 total. Now, this sounds like a lot of money, and it is. It was quite the investment, and we made it before we even hit the road. But the reason we did it is because we knew that we'd be boondocking and dry camping all the time. So what this solar system allows us to do is camp anywhere out in the national forest, on BLM land, anywhere that there's camping, we are typically looking for free camping. Uh, we can stay there and still have electrical power. So what justified this huge expense for us is we figured that you know the daily rate of an RV park uh, for hookups is somewhere around $30 a night. So it just would not take long for this solar system to pay for itself. I mean, 300 days in an RV park at $30 a night is $9,000. And we've been on the road for over two and a half years now, which, you know, we're approaching a thousand days on the road. If we were staying in RV parks all that time, I mean, what is that, $30,000 or something crazy? So, I mean, I know they have monthly and weekly rates at RV parks and that makes it cheaper, but the fact remains that since we're able to boondock for free because of our solar, it has already well paid for itself 
and now we're just reaping the benefits of being able to camp for free. We actually have a ton of solar videos, so I'll actually link the playlist down below to all of our videos on solar so that you can see, you know, the step-by-step -step installation of everything and, you know, in-depth on uh, all the components that we have. And I actually did the solar install all by myself, and it took well over 30 hours to install all of this. Um, so, you know, in the videos, it, go, it makes it look like it goes pretty quick, but it actually took a very long time. Um, but would we do it again? Absolutely. I love solar. We, we just think it is so awesome that, uh, you know, just collecting solar rays, you know, photons from the sun are charging our batteries and we can use that for everything. You know, it runs our lights, it powers our laptops that we work off of. It Solar literally powers our lives. Every electrical system in our trailer can be powered by our batteries and it's, it's just incredible technology that blows me away every time I think about it. And when I see my panels up on the roof, you know, tilt it up toward the sun, it just looks so cool and I'm so proud of it. Solar is what allows us to RV, to travel, to live the way that we do. It is a indispensable part of our adventures. Uh, so would we do it again? Absolutely. Heck, if we did it again, I might just buy us another battery for 600 amp hours of storage because, you know, 400 amp hours just hasn't really been enough for us with the electrical, uh, the electrical usage we do, but then I would need another $2,400 and it's just not happening. The fifth upgrade we did in our trailer had to do with our shower. As many of you know, the original shower head that comes in a shower is typically pretty low pressure and it uses quite a bit of water and it has, you know, the shutoff valve that leaks a lot. What we did is we bought this Oxygenix shower head, which has higher pressure, but it doesn't use any more water than the other one. As a matter of fact, I'm pretty sure the other one actually used more water than this one does. And the the update to the shower head that we did is it did come with its own shutoff valve, but it dripped when <laughs> when you had it turned off while you were lathering up or whatever. Just imagine standing in a shower and you're lathering up and this is dripping cold water down your back. I'm sure you can imagine that it's not pleasant. So we switched it to this one, which doesn't allow that to drip. And on that same note, the other update we did is um, when you have your shutoff valve turned off, your cold water has higher pressure than your hot water lines. So when this was off and you were lathering up, the cold water had time to backflow into the hot water lines. So when you were to turn it back on, you get blasted with 40 or 50 degree weather, whatever is in your fresh tank, whatever that temperature is, instead of hot water, and it would take a second before it warmed up. So imagine you're lathering up and you turn your water back on and it blasts you with very cold water. You can just imagine the screams in here. Just. Just imagine them. <laughs> so what David did is he put a one-way valve on the hot water line. The access to it is actually on the other side of this wall. And that allowed it so that the cold water couldn't backflow into the hot water lines. So now when we turn this off and we lather up, not only does it not drip the cold water that has been backflowing in, but it also, when we turn it back on, blasts the regular temperatured water that we've already set you know, down with the faucets. And this shower head, cost I think $30 and all the extra little components for the hot water fix only cost about $5. So in total, this was only about a $35 upgrade, which is great. In total, David says it took him about three hours to do both of those. And obviously, would we do it again? Yes, nobody likes cold showers. If you like cold showers, then I don't know, there's something wrong with you. I mean, you might like cold showers. I guess, I guess that means there's not really something wrong with you, but I don't like cold showers. So yes, I'm doing it again but no one likes getting blasted with cold water during a hot shower. Yes, if you're expecting hot water and you're getting blasted with cold water, it's not fun. The sixth upgrade we did was this. We used to have a big U-dinette back here, which is great for seating in an RV, especially when you have family. It's a nice area to sit and eat at but it's not really a great place to sit and work at. So what we did is we ripped that out of here. We had had enough of that. That was a pain in our butts, literally. Um, so what we did is we instead made and installed this butcher block tabletop with these raw iron legs 
we've got these nice comfortable seating office chairs that are also cute so they look good in the area we added carpet back here to make it easy for or, or at least comfortable for our feet because i mean the ground's cold back here and then we also added an ikea table on the side for storage and then also for some decorations on top we love this workspace we sit here day in and day out we work constantly on our laptops or if we're gaming or if we have to sit down and eat this is the only seating we have in our entire trailer we don't have a couch we don't have chairs none of that so for us making this space over here more comfortable but also look good and work well with our space was a huge huge plus for us now you might be wondering how long something like this could take well david and his dad actually had and to your grandpa and my grandpa actually had to cut sand and just they, they had to do a lot of work on it they had to do a lot of work on it and my grandpa had to help us get it in here that was a chore that was crazy we weren't even sure if it was going to fit but it actually fits wall to wall perfectly it's great we love it in total it probably took well over 20 hours to not just take out the dinette that was the easy part it was you know getting it in here doing all the staining and the sanding getting the legs attached properly it was a chore we had to make a box over our furnace back here and it was a lot <laughs> the 20 hours is purely a guesstimate because we don't actually know how long it took us but it took us a very long time and multiple weeks and a lot of work in total with the butcher block tabletop the wrought iron legs these chairs the ikea table and the rug it was seven hundred dollars or roughly seven hundred dollars to update this portion of our trailer will we do it again yes obviously this is the most comfortable seating we've had in our trailer and i just i love it it's it it may as well be my own personal recliner i can lean back i can enjoy this space i'm not just sitting on this tiny little cushion foamed seat anymore that has flattened out and and so i'm not actually sitting on a cushion anymore i'm sitting on just hard plywood with this hard back behind me no i'm actually comfortable i enjoy the space it's definitely a must upgrade for us if we ever get a trailer that doesn't have comfortable sitting again it's something we'll do again the next upgrade we did was these roller shades when we first bought our trailer we had uh, mini blinds and they didn't block the light very well I don't really like the look of mini blinds, so I kind of thought they were ugly. And the cats just were so annoying with them because they're always, you know, pushing on them with their paws and like just that crinkling, clank, clank, clank noise. It would happen in the middle of the night or in the morning and it would wake us up super annoying so we got these day night roller shades that are on some of the nicer trailers you know they're not putting these on a springdale these are going on the montanas and the grand designs of you know the rv and community not 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 our springdale but we love them they roll up by themselves super easy and behind the night shade is a day shade, which is just like a mesh. So if the sun, like if it's really bright outside, then uh, if the sunlight's too intense, especially when we're sitting here working at our desk, which looks out this window, we can pull the day shade and it helps block that sunlight, but it also pulls up really easily, you know, rolls up by itself. They're slow rise, so they don't just go blasting open. Uh, but yeah, we really like them. They were, they were fairly easy to install as well. The uh, mini blinds came off super easy. And then all I had to do was um, just screw into the wall the clipping, the mounts that, uh, the, uh, that the roller shades clip into. Um, total, I would say, or time in total, it probably only took two, maybe three hours. Jenny and I did it in an afternoon. It was super quick. Um, and as far as cost those, goes the problem with these roller shades is 
there isn't going to be like a set cost. It's really going to depend on how many windows you have, how tall they are, and how wide they are. Uh, especially this huge back window. If you've got a picture window like this, this bad boy is going to be pretty expensive. You'll just have to call and get an estimate on how much it'll cost. Uh, and just like everything, we've got the link in the description below to Irvine Shades website. So you can give them a call if you're interested. But we love these day night shades and we would definitely do it again. And going along with that too, Jenny rewrapped our valences uh, and she made these as well to replace the brown ones that we had. Uh, this color scheme just goes better with what we're trying to, you know, create as the color scheme on the inside of our trailer. Uh, it really makes it more homey in here because the design we had on these was um, just very campery. It felt like, you know, we were in a camper, which we are, but you know, we wanted to feel more homey in here. So the gray and the blue look so much better. Jenny did an excellent job on it. Uh, the fabric was pretty cheap um, because this is actually just a bed sheet. Um, we bought two bed sheets. Um, so it, we're when we replaced our beds bed sheets. So it actually matches our bed perfectly. Um, and this we just got from Joanne Fabrics. So we've got a probably less than $100 in fabric, but it did take Jenny a really long time to do because she's not, you know, uh, an upholsterer or anything. So it's kind of go, learn how she goes and she bought a hand sewer to help her out too off of Amazon. Uh, so she put a lot of time into this, but I think she did an excellent job. It looks great. We would definitely do it again. I would definitely have her do that again. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> yeah. The eighth upgrade we did was our RV lock keyless entry door lock. And it was super easy to replace. There's only six screws on the inside. You take those out, you take your old one off, you put the new one on, six screws, you're done. I think it only took David an hour at most. I think it even took him less time than that. And it's really nice because if you don't know this, there are quite a few RVs that might have the same key as you. Now, that's not all of them. Not all RVs have the same key as you, but some of them might. So to ease our fears on that, we got this. And having this keyless entry over here is really nice. We use it all the time, especially when we're just going on walks and stuff. However, whether or not we would do this again, we're not really sure. We're kind of on the fence about it. And the reason being is because, let me show you, it moves, it wiggles a lot. I'm not sure if you can see that. Yeah, we can. Yeah, cool. So it wiggles a lot and we have tightened this so many times, it still does it. This striker plate over here, this, this top screw, it seems that no matter what we do, we can't get it to, to stay in. And that means that we have issues closing our RV. And as you can see on the inside, this wiggles on the inside too. That wiggles a lot. It makes it really hard to close our door sometimes. And you can obviously see it's rusting too. These aren't stainless, which is really frustrating because this is an outside component and it's introduced to moisture all the time. So not being stainless is pretty frustrating to us. However, knowing that our key doesn't match anybody else's key is actually really comforting to us so for now we're dealing with it if you guys have a solution to this or if you have an rv lock and you've had to deal with this before and you know of a solution let us know because that's the only thing that's frustrating us about this now this was 240 dollars now that's a pretty penny but we like it we thought it was worth it at the time we still think it's worth it now we're just a little frustrated with it the other keys that we've replaced actually are down here. We've replaced these tumbler locks with these cir circular lock tumbler locks. They don't have a handle anymore. Our old one had a handle and only locked on the one side, meaning someone could just grab the handle and essentially open it up enough to get a crowbar behind it and then rip these open. So to ease our stress on these, we replaced them. We got six of them because we have three doors, each with two of these. And these were about $50 each. We love these. There's no way that I'm getting my fingers back here to even pry anything out. So we are really happy with these. We would definitely do these ones again. The reason we switched out our tumbler locks is because the key to them probably matches yours. If you look at your key to your RV storage, it probably says CH751. Guess what? That means that my old key that used to open these opens yours too. We wanted these to be as secure as possible. So we got these and we're very happy with them. You gonna join me for the last one? You gonna join me? Okay. I think she's gonna join you. Yep. Is my lap warm? Hmm? Oh, oh, I, I, 
You squeezed her too hard? I was... I was just hugging her. Anyway, the final upgrade that we made to our travel trailer is our cellular signal booster. This is the interior and... <laughs> Alice is getting a little too close. Oh, and Butters is gone. Dang it, Alice. She was my buddy. Oh, well. They fight. They'll be friends one day. We're holding out hope. Anyway, our cell signal booster is our last upgrade. And uh, we went with a solid RF signal booster. This is the interior antenna. And the biggest thing that we love about uh, this one in particular is that it has two interior antennas. So you may know that the... Uh, antennas don't really have very much range, the interior antennas. So your cell phone, wait, are you coming back? Well, oh, come on, okay, nope, whatever. Um, the uh, cell phones have to be fairly close to the signal booster to get the boosted signal or your Wi-Fi hotspots or whatever. So having two interior antennas is kind of a big deal. Um, the other one is on the other side of our trailer so that we can have boosted signal throughout the trailer. So that's the main reason we went with the solid RF. Uh, it costs just under $500 and it took Let's see, it took me probably six hours to install. It wasn't that hard. It's fairly simple and straightforward. One thing that did add to the installation time uh, for me is that I wired it directly into DC power so that uh, it could receive power uh, without our inverter being on. And it's also more efficient to run stuff off of these things off of DC power as well. We did test our solid RF signal booster against a Surecall booster that's very similar and the Solid RF did win that competition. Uh, and what it actually really came down to is whether or not you minded that the amplifier is mounted up on the roof. Uh, that's how Solid RF does it. Um, I've read online that the closer the amplifier is to the outside antenna, the less um, you know signal degradation you'll have. So that's what Solid RF did. Um, it does make the mounting up on the roof a little more wonky, uh, whereas Surecall and WeBoost have the amplifier mounted inside. So it really just depends on whether that, you know, potential increase in quality uh, of signal quality and signal boost strength is worth having the amplifier mounted up on the roof. Everything's still waterproof, so it's not that big of a deal. Um, but basically, what it all boils down to is that this was absolutely worth it to us. We love our signal booster. We know we knew that we had needed one for the longest time, but boy, how nice it is to finally be able to boost our signal when we're camped out in the middle of nowhere and we have super, super weak signal that before we couldn't work on, it was not usable. Now, plug our booster in and we're good to go. I love this thing. So that's been all the upgrades that we've done to our trailer in the past two and a half years that we've owned it. And we love all of them except, like we said, the RV lock keyless entry. Other than that, I mean, that one we're a little on the fence of. We might do it again, we're not really sure, yeah. but we would definitely do all the other ones Everything again. Else. Oh my gosh. Can you imagine doing all that over again? Okay, oh, we're, okay, we're never switching rigs, we're never getting something else, we're staying in this trailer forever because I'd not want to do all that again. Especially the solar, I mean, that's just so much work and having to switch rigs and put new solar on. Anyway, if you guys are interested in any of the things we've mentioned in this video, not only do we have links to all of the products in the description below, but we also have links to all of the installation videos, along with David's entire solar playlist down there for you. If you want to watch the install videos, maybe get a better feel as to whether or not you'd be able to do this yourself, so on and so forth. Yeah. But that's it for us today. We're going to call it a night. We'll catch you guys later. Bye. Say bye. Bye-bye, Allie. Bye.